book and we're on five point five and we're going to just simply put this up and it should be i'll probably put it behind five point four depending upon how how far we go with this this is jeremiah with new covenant as we embark upon a brand new segment which is five point five i call it the big five playoff number five and we're on five right now okay number one was a basic idea of what faith is number two is faithing how many different kinds of beliefs do we have is it saving faith faith hope and love and now lean hide prop and carry now i've already talked about pardon me lean hide prop and carry already okay i've already talked about it and uh let's have a quick review of a, a few items and then we're going to mention lean hide prop and carry and we're going to stop okay and today we have the loudest lawnmower that i've ever heard it must be a lawnmower from 1935 but jeremiah is here he is on fire we greet you in the only name given amongst men by which you must be saved one moment okay here we go now we are just rejoicing in our God, our God reigns, he's in charge, and you'll see that soon. But let's get going, you know, we have faith here, which is the big five, and uh, we're at 5.5, which means we're basically done. Now, let me explain uh, what's going on here. As we lift up hands unto our king, hearts, hands, and voices unto our God, praising Jesus for the things he has done, worshiping the Lord because he's so valuable, admiring the Lord because of his beauty, and thanking the Lord for everything that he's done uh, by grace and mercy. You can't earn it, and you don't deserve it. And that's what grace and mercy mean. Grace means you can't earn it. Mercy basically means you don't deserve it. And that's good. That's delight. That's happiness. That's blessing. That's eulogia that's the word of god here you don't deserve it and the lord's going to give it to you anyway that makes him magnanimous now let's get into faith here as we're having a little bit of a pollen problem here but let's move on uh, this is the time of year when pollen really starts to hit the air hit the airwaves and uh, it affects me a little especially with the windows open let's get going let's get going Faith, Jeremiah, what is all this faith talk about? Well, I've spent quite a few hours here uh, giving you a lot of different basic uh, biblical ideas and a lot of terminology so that you can become familiar with the terms here. Now, as I mentioned before, I'll, I'll tell you again, <coughs> excuse me, that we are here to rejoice in the Bible study that's coming up. See, that's also a big part of this the scriptures are going to really bring home a lot of the ideas that i'm sharing with you now in other words when you read we just looked at uh, hebrews 11 and a lot of people um, a lot of people i've seen on television and otherwise they misunderstand what they're reading they're adding things that don't it's not there the grammar doesn't teach what they're saying it's not correct it's just plain wrong and, and the, I don't mention people who get things wrong because I've seen quite a few on television and so forth and online and the radio. And I know some Bible teachers who I can correct, but I usually don't correct them. I just, I just usually pray for them and so forth. And I, I gently make suggestions because we're not supposed to be uh, Christians. Christians are not supposed to be combative. Blessed are the meek and the poor in spirit. We're here to develop an attitude of being gentle with people. Now, if someone is really, really um, confrontational, then you then then you then you have a right to to kind of raise your you know your emotion up a little bit because you're going to have to you know you're going to have to uh, get a little firm be firm. Let's put it that way. Okay? 
So what is faith? Well, we've been talking about all these different ideas. Now today we're going to get into 5.5, which is lean, hide, prop, and carry. But before we do, let's have a quick review over some of the basic ideas that we've gone through, okay? Let's talk about a few of the basic ideas. First of all, we talked about what is faith in terms of, it's called pistis or apistis in the Greek, and it means basically the same thing that we, in, in, in the English uh, dictionary, that is persuaded, conviction, belief, confidence, trust. And these are some of the main terms that we that I've d decided to use to share with you that, that the first belief that we have in general, uh, without getting too complicated and so forth, is belief on the Lord Jesus Christ. So you're believing in, you're believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where it basically starts. And we leave it at that from a very simple perspective or just we limit it to that for now kind of thing for the for the baby Christian, so to speak. We don't want to get into a whole lot of information. Okay? And, and that's where it starts. That's a part of sound doctrine. 2.1. I, I, I talk about that in this matrix uh, in 2.1. That's playlist number two, the first section. Okay? Basic, simple Christianity. Now, it, 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 we, 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 could, we can begin to add, we can add something else to this, which is, what is secular belief? What, what does the world outside of the church, what are their beliefs and convictions? What do they believe, what do they put their confidence in? Well, they put their confidence in other things, or things, and material things, and jobs, and, and horses, and, and, and uh, machinery, and their, their own minds, their ability, their own intellect, and that's what they put their confidence in. But we are, we are fully persuaded that putting our confidence in Jesus Christ is all we basically need to do, and it's an easy button. That's what it is. You know, and, the, and the faith is that God exists, and he's valuable, and he offers valuable ideas for human beings. The, the Bible offers valuable ideas, and, and you need to pay attention to these ideas. You have to pay attention to them. For 2,000 years, a human being that has heard the gospel is responsible for responding to serving the Son. Everybody in Protestant Christianhood believes this. This is what everybody teaches in general, okay? And that's basic Protestant Christianity. Now, I have a King James Bible. I'm what you, I'm what you may call a non-denominational Protestant. And, and, and we push the King James Red Letter Edition and all these other versions, we, we tell you to basically leave them alone. Now, if, if you have some a New American Standard or something like that, and that's all you have, you're going to have to work with that. But when you use me as your guide here, um, you, you, there's a good chance that th those errors in some of these translations will not affect you because there can be some very serious errors in different versions. Very, very, very serious errors. Where they've taken the King James Bible and they've changed it and they've twisted it upside down in some of the, the words in there, some of the ideas misplaced modifiers, whatever you want to call it, it's, it's wrong. But let's let that go for now because we're hopeful that you do have a King James and if you do buy a Bible, we want you to buy a red letter King James edition, okay? Uh, I'm pushing that pretty hard here so that, you're, that so that your confidence is not going to be maligned. You're going to be right on track with what you're supposed to be learning about sound doctrine, okay? Because Christianity is putting faith in all of the doctrine that's in here. And it's very consistent. In the past 50 years in America, maybe 60 years, America has bought into, they decided to basically change the gospel quite a bit. But we who are Quakers, who have been studying the same doctrine, uh, Protestant basic Christian doctrine, we're not new evangelicals, you might say, who have gone astray 
on many areas in the Bible. That's my point. But we're here to stick to the basics of William Penn and George, what's his name, uh, Fox, or was it George Fox or Henry Fox, the gentleman who started the Quaker uh, belief in, in, in England. We're basically those pilgrim people here. Television, Starbucks, uh, a lot of things are in the new world we don't necessarily participate in. That's my point. Clothing that's not necessarily appropriate. Uh, you know, we stick to the basic rules, and that makes you a standard Protestant, and that's what I teach here. I teach standard Protestantism. It doesn't mean that everybody who's modern or an evangelical is mixed up. That's not my point. My point is that we know that we're, we're on the right track because we have grammar and we have basic discipline here. Okay, and, and I, can, I can see that some people have the Christian faith that is not necessarily the Christian faith. And, 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 and how do I correct people like that? I do it point by point. And this is what's so beautiful about being a Christian who has sound doctrine and knows the form of sound doctrine from Paul the Apostle, that no matter how popular somebody else out, people out there are, it doesn't affect you. Okay? So, knowing sound doctrine is your, your home, James, you know, and, and that is what we call the Christian faith, whereby that everything that's in your Bible, you have the right confidence. Okay? You're, you have the right convictions is probably the best word. Convictions usually, usually mean something that you believe in and you're, you're sticking to it. A belief is something you believe in, but you, you may not stick to it. Persuaded means you may not be fully persuaded. That's why Paul says fully persuaded. So there's different ways of looking at these terms. Trust means that, that you, you're leaning uh, on something and you're relying upon someone else or you're relying upon something that you haven't seen manifested before or yet. It hasn't been manifested. It's like if you're having a problem with sin, you come to church. You're, you're supposed to believe that the Lord is, is, is powerful enough to help you get through that that area of sin in your life so that you can become the narrow path Christian. That, that, that you can present yourself as a living sacrifice. That's the only way that, that God accepts people. Now obviously the, the Lord is going to accept people who are going to have difficulty with sin off and on, otherwise there probably, would, probably wouldn't be anybody in heaven. But the point is, is that your Christian faith needs to be in line with the basics of sound doctrine of Paul the Apostle and the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And it's not that difficult. I've taken you through a lot of this already. Okay? Faith is believing basically in all of the commands of Jesus Christ and the teachings. The Lord gives you teachings that support the commands. The teachings support the commands. Some people try to make the, make the commands contradict the teachings. That means that they're not doing very well at all with grammar. Okay? And that's just the way it is. Now those who are paying attention to grammar, they, they won't get confused with sound doctrine and the form that's in stone. The form of sound doctrine in these red letters, it's in stone. And I'm guiding you through the stones here. I'm guiding you through that which is iron. It's, a, it's an iron fence. And it's not difficult to understand the iron matrix when you take the time to study it, okay? It's an iron matrix. It doesn't move. The commandments of Jesus Christ are essentially what you're putting your confidence in, which are yield to a life of a servant. We're going to take a break here. It was, it, people are cutting their lawns here the other day and they're doing it again. They're cutting it every day now and, and because the grass is growing, I guess. Lots of sunshine and rain. What does that mean? Grass grows high, quick. <laughs> but no, we'll be right back. As, as I'm going to take a break and we're going to get right back into 
talking a little bit about what faith is, and, and we're going to wrap it up. You know, that the Christianity is you being persuaded that, that in 2,000 years that Jesus Christ who teaches love is somebody that you want to follow. Do you want to follow someone who teaches love? Yes or no? Okay. I'll be right back. I'm back. I'm back again. This is Jeremiah with New Covenant. This is, of course, uh, Jeremiah and Michael Pearson, 2022, and let's get going. And uh, I'm going to talk just for a couple minutes while the lawnmower is going here. Uh, uh, you know, we, we have to live with certain things, and that's the way it goes. But I want to get this done today because we have other things to do. We might go to the church today and, and, uh, or to the... We might pass out some Bible or something today, but we, you know, we'll have the afternoon for binding up the brokenhearted and seeking and saving those which are lost and giving energy to people who are dying, light to those who are in darkness. And um, I think about this just about every day. I do this here with this work, but... We have boots on the groundwork out here. In the streets that we we do usually every Saturday, uh, me and some of the brethren, and uh, that's what we do. So, uh, and we'll probably do that today. So, we we just don't teach. We we evangelize. That means we go out there and and tell people that Jesus saves. Jesus saves. That's what we do. And of course, some people are already saved. And then we have koinonia or fellowship. Okay, we have communion. We, we're a community. We get together. That's what communion means. It means get together. Fellowship, get together. And we have jubilee. We have joy together. Right? So we're talking about faith right now, and I want to just give a quick review over what basic faith is, and, we're, and I'm going to shut down uh, after I mention lean, high, prop, and carry. So I wanted to talk a little bit about pistis, which means faith in the Greek. That's all it means. And it basically means to put confidence and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, and that's what it means. And we talked about persuaded and conviction, believe, and, uh, and trust. And we talked about how these all basically mean, they all basically, re basically refer to the fact that someone is going to see something that doesn't exist in front of them. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist in front of me right now. You know, such as I'm, I'm going to go to church, and James says the, 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 the elders will pray for you, and you'll be healed as a general order for the church from Brother James. You're supposed to, when you're not well, go to the church, and have the leaders pray for you. And, 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 and that's the procedure that you're supposed to have. America has thousands of books at the bookstore on how to be healed when they don't need any of these books, essentially. James said, go to the elders and be healed. You don't need a book to, to uh, teach that. It's already in the book. So people are having extraneous uh, information and data that they don't need. And, and, and it's probably not correct because otherwise James wouldn't say give you a simple order to do. It's very simple. Go to the elders, have them pray for you and be healed. And, and, and have confidence that God's going to heal you. That, 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 you're, that, that you're going to be healed. As a general rule for the Christian. As a general rule. It doesn't take a book. I don't have to go to Jabez's prayer. I don't have to count how much money I gave God or help sister so-and-so. I don't really need any of this information. It doesn't make any sense. That's not Christianity. That, that, that's a false representation. And there's a lot of false representations out there in the world. We're not going to mention them, but a lot of people are maligning the true gospel. They're, 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 they're twister donuts. And we're not going to talk about them right now. It's just it's very sad that we have these people. But you need to find a Bible teacher that is honest and, and is going to speak to you clear Bible teaching. 
and, and, they, and they need to know grammar fairly well. Uh, when I was young, I couldn't believe how many, well, relatively young, I couldn't believe how many Bible teachers were on television and the radio who didn't really know grammar that well at all. They weren't talking properly. They were using a lot of slang. They were making lots of jokes um, and so forth. And the point is that I'm not here to attack anybody. It's just that you need to, to come up to a certain level of competence in order for you to read things to other people, e even fiction. And this is much more serious than a fiction novel of some sort. A leg the legend of so-and-so that could or could not be true, or Tolstoy's War and Peace. All of these ideas need to be uh, presented properly with, with decent grammar and a decent understanding of what you're talking about. Shakespeare didn't always know what he was talking about in terms of subject matter, but his grammar was pretty flawless as far as I, as far as I know. And Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the number two uh, sold book in the history of Western civilization is Sherlock Holmes. And both of these books, there were there are errors made, uh, especially conceptually. Context-wise and conceptually, there are quite a few errors from a biblical standard uh, as to what both of these gentlemen were spewing. In spite of the fact they're considered wonderful writers, and I would say they, that Shakespeare and Conan Doyle were both um, wonderful writers. They're the, most, they're the most prolific writers in the history of the United States outside of the Bible, so here's my point. My point is that you need to know what you're talking about before you talk about it. And even some of the most heralded people, you know, who are literary giants, such as these two gentlemen, both of them made a lot of conceptual errors. Not too many per se, but enough to say that they're making a lot of errors. And what I'm talking about right now is in line with the word of the living God, how many errors did they make? These two most popular writers. Well, I, well, I, I can unequivocally tell you that, that they, they made a ton of errors. Now, it's not necessarily something that ruins the movie or the play. You know, so for most of their work, there are a couple of Conan Doyle um, books that uh, he really goes off, uh, he really contra he begins to contradict our sound doctrine here, our faith. He, 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 he contradicts it on a few levels, and that's not good. And, and, he lives, and he lives in London or England somewhere, not in London, but he lives in England, and that's where he lived, where the Bible was made, and he's contradicting some of the most basic principles that are, that are the matrix and, and the doctrine that we teach here in Protestanthood. Well, why did he do that? I'm not happy about that. I have all of Conan Doyle's books here, basically. And I'm familiar with a lot of Shakespeare. Here's my point. They shouldn't have done it. And they may be held accountable for that because they're educated men and they're not applying all the principles of Jesus Christ in their writing. Now, obviously, both of these gentlemen uh, do a good job on, uh, maybe for the most part, let's put it that way. They may not be flunking the class, but they're not getting an A. Even Shakespeare doesn't necessarily get an A. Uh, he's a very compassionate individual and a very caring man, obviously. And very devoted to his wife kind of guy, like, uh, like Rembrandt. But what, what's the point? The point is, is that we're here to get everything right, and when it ain't right, as we, as we put it here in America, we don't like it. And, and you're not supposed to like it when someone is not right. And we're very tolerant, and, and we're not going to get upset, and we're, no, we're not going to you know, get hysterical or anything. We're, it's just that that's wrong, and it shouldn't be wrong, especially with, peop with people who are educated and who live in, Western, in the Western civilization. But there's Bibles all over the place. You shouldn't get basic Bible things wrong. That's my point. Pertaining to the faith in Jesus Christ. 
sometimes the word faith is, is the same thing as Christianity or sound doctrine or all the principles that are in your uh, every word that proceedeth from uh, Shemaiah, from the mouth of God. So why is it such a big problem? With so many different areas. So in spite of the fact that I may like a, a book or, you know, uh, the Blue Danube or the Hiawatha or, you know, Robert Frost poems or, you know, whatever, whatever's out there, you know, it, my point is, is that we're here to be precise and it, it may bother some people, but it's not going to bother me to be precise. No. And the sound doctrine that we're going through right now, the faith of Jesus Christ, it has lots of words and, and, and it, it, the faith is a lot of ideas and they're not that difficult to remember in terms of the volume. So, you know, it's easy for me as a teacher of this doctrine over many years to see something and say, well, what are you doing? And I'm not happy with that. There's nothing wrong with that. When someone like Conan Doyle introduces confusion to the Bible doctrine and, and contradicts it in some way. We don't, I, don't, I don't want that. Aren't you from England where the first King James Bible was made? then why don't, why don't you stick in line with what's in there? So I have 80% of Conan Doyle's uh, uh, mysteries are, they're, they're, they're okay. But about 10% 10, 10 of them are over the top. And, and what are you doing, Mr. Arthur? Conan Doyle. Same for Shakespeare and, and some violence he has in some of his plays. And, now, wait a minute, dude, you know, bro, wait a minute, what's going on here? You're, you're, you're playing around with violence and, and pernicious uh, theatrical presentations, and, and, and we who are thinkers are sitting back going, hey, dude, what went wrong, man? You were doing okay in As You Like It. Even Henry V might be okay, you know, uh, but what happened in on a Midsummer Night's Dream and the Taming of the Shrew and Othello? You know where, where did all of this uh, confusion? Uh, well, because he wants to maybe make money. In order to make lots of money, gen in, in general in the world, you have to think like the world, and your literature has to reflect the world. If Sir Arthur Conan Doyle doesn't mention uh, a, a Buddhist Lama or something in, in, in the Himalayas, the people are going to turn off the TV show. Because people are being interested in, in, in Buddhism, or they're interested in Shintoism, or they're interested in some concepts of communism and some of the benefits of the proletariat movement and the Red Army of Trotsky. The point is that, is that if you don't talk this way, People have a tendency to turn you off because they're interested in things out there in the world. Where I'm, my primary interest is in the truth there and, and, and in the Christian faith and, and the components therein. And, and, I, and we have a conviction based upon these beliefs and these ethics and these morals. And, and they're in stone and they're not going anywhere. They're pillars. That's my point. What we're, what we're teaching here in the Christian faith is... It's pillars, and they don't move. Lying to someone doesn't move. It's still lying to someone. You're lying. Bear false witness against thy neighbor. That's a lie. That's breaking the Ten Commandments. It's not good yesterday. It's not good today. And it's not good tomorrow. See the point? That's part of the Christian faith. We believe in these ideas, and, and there's nothing unreasonable about you embracing the idea that lying is good. That there's nothing wrong with that at all. Now, before you became a Christian, you may not, you may not have been persuaded in this idea. But when you came to Jesus Christ, he, he wants you to be persuaded about everything that's good in his eyesight. That's the point. Matthew chapter 5. He wants everything to be good in his eyesight, and that's his, that, that's his goal 
It is to develop people who always do things that are good in his eyesight, as opposed to before you became a Christian, you, you, you were embracing all kinds of different ideas and behaviors that the Lord hates. That's what the Christian faith job is. Okay, that, That's my job, that's our job, is to push righteousness all over the place. These are ethics and morals and convictions that we want to establish correct everywhere. That's correct grammar, correct behavior, correct policing, correct, uh, 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 no matter what you, whatever, correct investments with our money and, and no gambling, no stealing, no cheating. This is what we teach here over and over again. It's not that difficult to teach these items. No. It's the easiest pie. Now, we're rejoicing in the Lord right now, and we're going to get back to this 5.5, uh, which is giving you a quick review over basics of faith, some of the basics, and, and we're going to wrap this up at 5.5 here, because 5.5 is going to be quick, because I already know what I'm going to do, uh, uh, and uh, what I want to do is, first of all, give you uh, a quick review over some of the basics of what Christian faith is, and then mention lean, hide, prop, and carry, and we're done. Lean, hide, prop, and carry. Then we're going to, that's it. I'm ready for, I'm, re I'm reviewing wisdom for you. Pardon me, I'm, I'm reviewing wisdom right now. Okay? When I get to beauty, that's going to be one of the biggest. Um, I, I'm going to probably have to make beauty, beauty's going to have its own channel. You're going to have to type in uh, my name and uh, probably type in Jeremiah Michael Pearson beauty. Um, that's what I'm going to probably uh, call it. So, you know, we'll see what happens when I get to my review of seven. I already have a, a hundred videos on beauty or so uh, up on the previous channel. They're not getting very many uh, uh, hits, as they say, but some people are watching them, and, and that's uh, that's all that matters to me is it is that we are connecting to some people, and every person is valuable. We only have a few people who have subscribed, and this has been a and this has been in existence for a couple of years now, but I don't advertise. But we do have some people who are enjoying uh, Bible study here. And uh, and that's the goal here. If it's a small group or a large group, doesn't matter. Right now, I think we probably have about 20, 25 people who are faithful and they are paying attention. And But if it's 25 or 500, it doesn't matter. Some people are obviously checking this off and on and when they have time. A lot of people don't have that much time, and I have tons of videos. People have time for commercials, you know, in a ball game, in a movie, on the weekend sometimes, but uh, let's not get into time and chronos right now. I'm going to shut down and be right back, okay? I'll be right back. Maranatha, Corinthians 16, 